to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin this is the gospel of christ to proclaim good news unto the poor the gospel of christ spreading the soul-saving message of jesus and now ben bailey this is the gospel of christ the bible says Charm is deceitful, and beauty is passing, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Proverbs chapter 31, verse number 30. We welcome you today to our study of the godly wife. As we think in this series of lessons about godly homes in an ungodly world, we're thinking about the role of the Christian wife in the home and how important that is and what a pivotal part she plays in the home today. And so we're so glad that you joined us for our study of this lesson today. We hope that you'll find your Bible and have it handy as we're going to be looking to the Word of God for our guide today. Friend, we want you to know that today's lessons are being brought to you by, today's lesson is being brought to you by members and congregations of the Lord's Church. The Church of Christ in your area would love for you to stop by and visit their assembly. You'd like to know more about God's church. You'd like to know more about maybe the home or plan of salvation, what the church teaches. You'll find people in the Lord's church who'd be happy to sit down and discuss the Word of God with you. You may want to visit one of their assemblies, their assemblies, whether that be on Sunday morning or Sunday night or Wednesday night. Again, you'd be their honored guest, and we encourage you to visit the Church of Christ in your area. Friend, we'd also like to help you here at the Gospel of Christ in your study of the Word of God. If you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson, this eight series lesson on godly homes in an ungodly world, we'd be happy to send that series to you free of charge. You can go to our website, thegospelofchrist.com, and from there, you can fill out a media request form. We'll be happy to let you have a digital download of that free of charge where you can watch it on a smart TV or from your computer, even on your phone, or if you need a DVD or a CD of that, We'll be happy to send that to you. We'll even pay the postage to get that there. And as always, we want you to know that here at the Gospel of Christ, our motive in presenting these lessons is simply to help men and women know God better and ultimately one day go to heaven. Our concern in these lessons especially is for the home. The home's under attack. The world is trying to infiltrate it. Satan is trying to do everything possible to attack it and to tear down the godly home. And so we want to build it up from the Word of God and encourage every person in the home to fulfill their role. And today we talk about one of the premier roles in the home. Thank God for every Christian mother, wife, and woman who is doing her part in the home. What a great honor they give to God. You know, when we think about the role of the wife and the mother and the Christian woman in the home, the Bible presents this as a position of honor. 1 Peter 3 verse 7, the Bible says, the husband is to honor his wife, to give her the respect she is due for her hard work, for her effort, for all that she puts into to make the home a godly place to be. And every, every husband, every son or daughter knows what the effort a mother puts in and how worthy of respect she is. Proverbs 18, 22 tells us this is a position of honor because she is such a spiritual asset in the home. Proverbs 18, 22 says this, he who finds a wife finds a good thing. Friend, a wife is such a good aspect, such a good benefit to the home and to the family and to the husband, and it's a great position of honor. Proverbs 19, 14, it is a blessing to find a wife. A good wife is indeed a blessing from the Lord. And so we want to give this woman, the, the Christian wife and mother and woman, the position of honor that she indeed deserves. But friend, let's also realize as we think about the Christian mother, the Christian wife, 
especially in the home, it's not only though a position of honor, the Bible teaches it is a position of submission. The wife is to submit to her own husband. Listen to the words. And again, we want to read this to you from the Bible so that you'll hear these words from the Scripture and the Christian wife and mother can be reminded of her role in the home. Listen to Ephesians chapter 5, verses 22 through 24. The Scripture says, Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as also Christ is head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so that their wives be to their own husbands in everything. When we think about this position of honor, let's also realize that God has placed the husband as the head of the home, and the wife is in a position of submission to her husband. Now, what is that submission like? Well, Colossians 3.18 says, as is fitting in the Lord, meaning that the way God teaches, not, not submission in the sense that he's a dictator and whatever he says, she has to toe the line and say, do ex no, that's not the idea. As is fitting in the Lord carries a beautiful picture with it. The church is a submit to Christ because Christ gave Himself for her. He thinks about her best interest in every decision that's made is to promote her well-being, the church's well-being. That's the mindset of a husband. And so he, he considers, he talks to, he uh, works with his wife in those decisions and naturally she would want to give him the place God gives. Are, are wives to be obedient to their husbands? In a sense. The Bible says in Titus 2 verse 5 that wives are to obe be obedient to their own husbands. But again, we're not talking about forced obedience. We're not talking about when someone says, you better do what I say. That's not the mindset. Since he's been placed by God as the head of the home, and where he's trying to help the whole family be what God wants it to be, then there is that sense in which everyone is to respect and follow that. And yet, we know that the husband has that great responsibility to be the kind of person he wants to be. Listen carefully. When husbands are trying to think about their wife and their family and everyone's spiritual well-being, when they're being the selfless person they ought to be, and trying to lead the home in a way God wants them to lead it, it's not hard to follow someone like that. But when they're not, that's where problems begin to arise. And so we want to have that idea of it not only being a position of honor, but it's a position of submission. Now, friend, the Bible also teaches that the wife is the one who is, in many ways, in charge of the home. Not in the sense of, of being head of the, uh, the family, but she is the homemaker, the Bible will describe. Titus 2, verse 5, the women are described as homemakers. One who has the interest of the home is one of her main priorities. Uh, let me share with you a couple of passages that I think help us to understand this. Titus 2 verse 5 describes her as a homemaker where the home and the family is one of her main interests. Listen to 1 Timothy 5 verse number 14. Therefore, I desire that the younger widows marry, bear children, here it is, manage the house, give no opportunity to the adversary to speak reproachfully. And so she's the homemaker. She's the one who uh, manages the house. She helps everybody in the home to be happy and healthy, to be prepared to face the challenges of life. And, and friend, that's something that the, only the wife can do. She's specifically and uniquely made in that way. Listen to it from, you know, sometimes people take this in a, a negative aspect, but that's not the idea at all. What a great privilege and responsibility worthy of honor that the Christian woman has. Listen to the example of this in Proverbs 31. I want you to hear the respect this woman is worthy of. Proverbs 31 verses 27 through 29. Here's the idea we're talking about better than we could ever describe. The proverb writer puts it this way. When we talk about the wife being the, the homemaker in charge of the home, caring for the home, the Bible says of this woman in Proverbs 31, she watches 
over the ways of her household, does not eat the bread of idleness because of that. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done well. But you excel them all. You can see this woman burning the midnight oil. She's working hard. She's doing everything she can to help everybody in the home and how thankful they are that this is a position where she enables everybody in the home to be successful. For the wife, the mother, the Christian woman, the family, the home comes first. Does that mean that it's sinful for her to work. No, that's not the idea. In that same chapter, Proverbs 31, verse 16, this virtuous woman is out and being industrious and working and helping the home. Acts 16, verse 14, Lydia worked in the home. And so we're not saying that it's sinful for a, a, a woman to work. That's not the idea. And friend, please hear me well in this. When we say that the, the Christian woman and mother and wife, her interest is the home, Please understand the difference between the home and the house, okay? A house is a dwelling. A home is the family. We're talking about her interest being in the family, the home. Everybody who dwells in that, that residence, she's enabling, managing, helping them to be successful, doing the things that only she specializes in from God. What else do we know about the position in the Bible? of a godly wife and a godly mother. Friend, it's a position of tenderness and love that again, she's uniquely qualified for. Titus 2 verse 4 says this, she is to love her husband and her family. I want you to think for just a moment as a young, maybe you think back to your childhood and I want you to think about your mother, how she taught you love how you saw love from her hands and, and her face and, and her respect, all that she did and, and what a loving example that was. Paul will talk about his relationship with the church in 1 Thessalonians 2 and he'll say, as a loving mother who tenderly cares for her children. Friend, that's what we think about. 1 Thessalonians 2 verse 7, she lovingly, tenderly cares for her children. What a position of love and honor that is. You know, the husband and the children, they ought to come before other things that are not as important. I'm not saying she can't have a life. I'm not saying she doesn't have interest. I'm not saying she can't have, that's not the idea at all. But God uniquely created the mother with that tenderness, that love, and she expresses that and passes that on to her children and everyone in the home. Where would we be without the love of the mother and the wife. But then when we think about this idea, the Christian wife and the Christian mother, the Bible teaches she's also to have respect for her husband. Listen to Ephesians 5 verse 33. The Bible says this, Nevertheless, let each one of you in particular so love his own wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. 1 Peter 3 verses 1 and 2 puts it this way, Wives, likewise be submissive to your own husbands, the Bible will say, so that even if some do not obey the word, they without a word may be won by the conduct of their wives when they observe your chaste conduct accompanied by fear. Now friend, all of us are to respect God. We want to give Him the honor we want to give him the credit he deserves. We want to reverence and pay that respect and honor to God because of who he is. In the home, the husband has a role that's unique to the wife. He's the head of the home. He's to protect. He's to uh, enable to everybody to be taken care of, to help, to help people grow spiritually. He's to be the leader in that home. And husbands and wives are to work together. But friend, the Bible does teach that the, the wife is to respect her husband. And please hear me well, the Bible also teaches the husband is to respect the wife. They're to respect each other equally as well. And so in our lesson on the husband and the godly man in the home, we emphasize the same idea that they're to respect each other. And we want to drive that point home as well as we think about the relationship of the wife. Well, what are some things that will help 
to have a godly home that husband and wife can do for each other. You know, I want you to take your Bible and I want you to turn the book of Proverbs and, and we want to mention this idea. One of the things in the home that is such a big deal and will help so much is that both husbands and wives ought not to be always critical and nagging on each other. That's going to do so much harm to the home. Listen to the words. Uh, and some of this is put in such graphic language. Listen to these words in Proverbs. Turn to Proverbs chapter 21, verse number 9. The Bible says, It is better to dwell in the corner of a housetop than in a house shared with a contentious woman. Flip over to Proverbs chapter 25, verse number 24. It is better to dwell in the corner of a housetop than in a house shared with a contentious woman. Back up to Proverbs chapter 12, verse number 24. And friend, this same statement could go just as well toward a contentious man. Proverbs chapter 12. Look at what the Bible says in verse number 4. An excellent wife is the crown of her husband, but she who causes shame is like rottenness in his bones. What can we encourage husbands and wives to do that'll help? Don't be critical, don't be nagging, don't always be negative of one another. Am I saying that there's not room for constructive criticism? Well, there's no doubt that there is. And we want to encourage, we want to help, but we want to do it in the right way. You know, think about this with me. In Revelation 2 and 3, Jesus speaks to the seven churches in Asia Minor. And remember, the relationship between Christ and the church. <clears throat> According to Paul, in Ephesians 5, verses 22 to, through 23, is a lot like the relationship between husbands and wives. And so with that in mind, when Jesus addresses five of those seven churches, they've got big spiritual issues. But you know what Jesus says every time? He'll say to them, if, if there's anything good at all, He'll say something positive first. I know your works. I know your faith. I know your zeal. I know your love. And He'll compliment them. But then He'll say, but here's something I think we ought to work on. Here's something I want to encourage you to change or to do differently. And so if we are critical, let's do it in a positive way. Let's find good things that we can say and compliment as well, and then let's take that criticism and use it in a godly way. And so husbands and wives, and this goes both ways, okay? Don't be always negative. Don't be nagging. And when we do need to be critical, let's do it in a good way. And then, friend, I want us to think about this idea. When we think about the godly wife, the godly mother, I want us to think about some characteristics of what that woman is described like in the Bible. Would you take your Bible, and let's see how God describes this in Titus chapter 2. I want you to take your Bible, and I want you to look with me in Titus chapter 2, verses 3 through 5. How does the Bible describe the character of a godly mother and godly wife? Listen to these words in Titus chapter 2. I want you to see verses 3 through 5. The Bible says, The older women likewise, that they be reverent in behavior, not slanderers, not given to much wine, teachers of good, that they admonish the younger women to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, homemakers, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the Word of God may not be blasphemed. When we read 1 Peter 3, verses 3 through 4, and all the qualities of, of women who are like Sarah under the Old Testament, the, the spiritual is what's emphasized. Teaching the younger women, love your children, uh, love your children, love your husbands, uh, be respectful, honor the family and the home to put spiritual things first. That's what God wants in the Christian woman, the Christian wife, and the Christian mother. And friend, this is sometimes a challenge today. 
because the world, the world tries to squeeze us into its worldly mold. It wants us to put uh, the business venture first. It wants us to put our own interests first. It wants us to put the things of this world and worldliness first and, and the emotions and the feelings of the world, which are often not God's, the way God thinks about it. It wants us and the home and everybody in the family to put that at the forefront. But friend, can we say today that that's not always the way God thinks? God thinks differently, and we need to follow His type of thinking and His ideas. And so when we think about the home, let's consider what the Christian wife and the Christian mother is going to be like. I, I want to take just a moment. I want you to think about with me some examples in the Bible of, of good, godly Christian women. You know, when I think about women in the Bible, who were such great examples. You can't help but think about the woman in Proverbs 31. You've got there the mention of the virtuous wife. And in that whole chapter, Solomon is going to, he's going to list the traits of this virtuous woman. Her conduct is so in line with what God wants. She works hard. She's got a good reputation for her work. Her character, her speech, her, her, the way she puts the home first, that's everything God wants a Christian woman to be. And so for just a moment, I want you to take your Bible and I want you to look at this woman with me. In Proverbs 31, we're going to mention a couple of others, but let's hold up some examples today. You know, we're talking about the Christian wife and the Christian mother in a godly home. Here's a perfect example from Scripture of that. Look in your Bible in Proverbs 31. Verse number 10, the Bible says, Who can find a virtuous wife? For her worth is far above rubies. The heart of her husband safely trusts her, so he'll have no lack of gain. She does him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and willingly works with her hands. She like, she's like the merchant ships. She brings her food from afar. She rises while it is yet night, provides food for her household and a portion for her maidservants. She considers a field and buys it from her prophets. She plants a vineyard. She girds herself with strength. She strengthens her arm. She perceives that her merchandise is good. Her lamp does not go out by night. She stretches out her hand to the distaff. Her hand holds the spindle. She extends her hand to the poor. She reaches out her hand to the needy. She's not afraid of snow for her household, for all her household is clothed with scarlet. She makes tapestry for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies sashes for the merchant. Strength and honor are her clothing. She'll rejoice in time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom. On her tongue is the law of kindness. She watches over the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. As a result, her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done well. You excel them all. Charm is deceitful. Beauty is passing. But a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. You know, when you think about a Christian wife and mother in the home. Think about this woman. Her character is beyond reproach. Her benevolence, she's helping other people, including the poor and the needy. Her children and her husband, they are, made, they are enabled to be successful because of her. Her husband is known in the gates, and yet she's the one who should be getting the credit in so many ways. And so what a position of honor and respect she's worthy of. I think of another woman in the Bible who is such a great example of this. You have uh, Elizabeth and you have Zacharias in Luke chapter 1. When I think about godly mothers, I can't help but think about Elizabeth in Luke chapter 1 verse 6. The Bible says this of this couple, they were both righteous before God, walking in all the statutes and commandments of the Lord, blameless. What will help for the home 
in the aspect of a godly mother when both father and mother are both trying to be righteous. They're both walking in the statutes and the commandments of God, blameless. The example that is set from a godly mother. You know, I can think back in my own life and I can think about the way my mother lived. I can think about the way she spoke. I can think about how tenderly she cared for the children in the home and her example as a Christian. What a powerful role model that was for me and my dad and my sister for everybody in the home to follow. And then we think about one of the great women of the Bible, Jesus' mother Mary. You know, friend, when I think about the women that we look up to in Scripture, Mary is a great one as well. Uh, their relationship, the relationship of Mary and Joseph and Jesus in the home and the way she lived her life, how God spoke about her. She was um, in many ways premier among women. Doesn't mean she was sinless. And we're not saying she's someone that we ought to worship today. That's not the idea. She was a good Christian woman. She was a good Christian mother. She enabled her family and all the children in it to be successful. And so today, we hope and pray that this lesson will honor it will encourage and it will motivate the Christian woman to be what God wants it to be. You know, we want to close by saying this. Thank God for every Christian mother, every Christian woman, every Christian wife. Has, she's done so much to help the home and the family, the husband and the children. She's benefited the church of the Lord so much with her hard work and what a position of honor she deserves and what a great role, role model she's been in the home. And so friend, we thank you today for joining us for this lesson on the Christian home. We're thinking about godly homes in an ungodly world and what a benefit the Christian mother has been. We hope that next time you'll join us in our study as we're going to think more about godly homes in an ungodly world and what a great series this is to build up the home when the world is trying to take it down. And so join us next time as we're going to think more about the godly home in such an ungodly world. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, streaming, free media, and Internet. Our motto is truly to take the whole gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. This is the Gospel of Christ. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On-demand downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you, email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call 844-6-GOSPEL. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the